Okay, we got a problem, Houston. Um, this business about when Pentecost occurs and the argument that it was the third day of the third month based on Exodus 19 compared to Leviticus 23, which we're going to go through in a few minutes, um, that kind of doesn't wash. It doesn't wash for a number of reasons, but I'm going to just go through this hopefully slowly. Okay. But I got to start at where God makes an issue of 57 days, because that's what we're talking about here. 57 days from the beginning of Passover to Pentecost. God is drawing an analogy that Israel, you know, gets incorporated in her law. You got Pentecost, which represents the harvesting of the Gentiles, which is also represented by Jubilee, the 50 years. That's the hiatus between Daniel 9, 26 and 27. But you also got Passion Week, Passover Week, which presaged the week that Christ would die, Messiah. You call him Messiah, we call him Christ. It's just both Jews wrote the Greek Old Testament, so it doesn't matter if I'm using Greek or Hebrew, okay? All right. He rose on first fruits. First fruits is after Passover ends, which I'm going to show you from Scripture. Okay? That's what's being missed here. If you say that you count to Omer beginning the day after Passover, and then you link it to when Israel came in the land on the third month in Exodus 19, all that math doesn't work. It doesn't balance. And God is trying to show balance. He's trying to show convergence. And he's trying to show it all the way back to Noah. Now, when you work out the numbers in Genesis 6 and 7 and 8, you can make a case, although I haven't got 100% proof yet, that Noah's birthday was what would become Passover. There's a guy who wrote a dissertation on it. it cost me $100 to get it. I haven't re finished reading his dissertation. But he goes through all the Jewish sources. Josephus, Philo, the Talmud you know, the, the various sects in Judaism at the time to try to derive this provenance of the flood. The problem is, when we go to analyze this, that people aren't looking enough at the Bible. They're looking at what everybody else thought, which is important, but the Bible is definitive. The Bible's text in Hebrew on this topic is wrong. Okay? The LXX text on this topic, which was written by Jews, translating from the Hebrew Bible they then had. The LXX text works. Daniel 9 uses the LXX in crafting his meter, and he's referring to Noah. Paul then tags Daniel 9 with his meter, also referring to Noah, and they're talking to, their meter is based on the timeline of Noah in the LXX. Okay, so look. We got 57 days here. It wasn't the 17th of IR, or however you want to pronounce it. I don't even like that modern term. It was the 27th day, and that was Ziv. I like the old name. You look like what you want. Okay? Now that equates to Pentecost. See? Look at this. If Noah was born on what would become Passover, the 27th day of the second month of his own life equates to Pentecost based on a 57 year 57 day difference see 57 days before the flood begins he's told to get ready and that you can all see in Genesis 7 I, I, here are the verses where you can see how old he is when he's told these things Okay, that's just straight text. That's a no-brainer. All right. But when you track the math, from the time he is told, okay, it's Pentecost. So he goes into the ark, into it. I mean, could you have a more bald metaphor than this? He goes into the ark, saving humanity, harvesting the people, 
because they're only Gentiles at that point. But harvesting the Gentiles, he's the only Gentile, him and his family, were going to be saved. I mean, you couldn't ask for a more pregnant metaphor than that. That is Pentecost. It's 57 days. That's the, the what do you want to call it, the precedence. The whole Bible is using the Noahic calendar as precedence. And I know you're not a stranger to that. He goes into the ark, into it, on Pentecost measured by what? 57 days from what? The time he's told to get ready. Here's the verses. You can look them up and do the math yourself. Okay, but that's not that's not only it. I mean, because if this was only it, you could say, well, it's just a coincidence. Okay, but see, God's creating a mirror at a 57 at both ends. Because there's 57 days from beginning of Passover to Pentecost, 57 days from Pentecost to 9th Ave. So the Jews will always know what time it is. That was the purpose of this. Okay, so now look at when he gets out, when he gets out, God does it to him again. Okay, here he is. He reaches his 601st birthday. And again, I'm saying that's Passover because what would become Passover because the numbers work so well. Okay, 57 days later, according to Genesis 8:14, he leaves. 27th day of the second month. That's 57 days. That corresponds to our Pentecost. So he enters the boat on Pentecost and he leaves the boat on Pentecost. He enters the he's told it, you know, get ready 57 days before he enters the boat. And then he leaves the boat 57 days after, after it's landed. See, the problem is the Hebrews text is kind of screwed up. Okay, so that's that part. And, and I'll start in the next increment in a minute.